students, and today we'll be learning basically my thought process. You'll get into my head a little bit here today, um, but we'll be learning my thought process on how I edit an image from start to finish using mostly uh, commands from Photoshop. Some of them will be actions as well from my collections. So uh, let's go ahead and just jump in here. The main part of this edit is learning how to correctly blur the background of your image. This is uh, just real quick here. This is our after image. I go ahead and zoom in a little bit. So before, after, how cool is that? I blurred the background of our image here in part of the edit and I'm going to, to um, go over how to correctly blur an image. Believe it or not, a lot of photographers are doing it wrong. <laughs> So no biggie, we're just gonna go over from beginning to end how I edited this image. Real quick, I do have to mention this image, it was submitted to me by Little B Photography. She's an amazing photographer, definitely go check her out. Um, and let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so here I have the before image. It is saved for web. So when we zoom in, you might notice that's a little pixelated, that's totally fine. Um, but, uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I see that this image is, uh, it needs some contrast, uh, brought into the image. It was probably shot in raw, which is great, but we do need to add that contrast back into the image. So to do that, I'm going to select layer, new adjustment layer levels. Okay. I'm going to be using the top left and middle top sliders, and I'm just going to move them in towards each other. Okay, this one is lightening the shadows and lightening the, the photograph a little bit. When I move in the left slider, notice how the, dark, the darks are getting darker. It's adding that contrast. So I'm just going to move that in a little bit here and keep inching the, the two uh, dials in until I find that I'm getting the contrast that I want. I'm only looking at the girl in the TP because I'm going to remove the contrast from the background. Again, I don't want the, con the background to be very contrasty. We're working on bringing the attention towards the subject in the TP in this photograph. I want to take uh, as much attention away from the background as possible. So I'm really liking this. And uh, I'm just going to exit out of there. I've got my layer mask selected. I'm going to select my brush. And I'm going to make sure it is a soft brush. There we go. And I'm going to press Control I to invert my mask. Okay, so that just made the entire effect go away. I want to just paint it on the subject in the TP. Okay, I still have my layer mask selected. I'm going to bring white to the foreground color. And my opacity is at 100%. I'm just going to brush that effect onto my subject here. Notice how the contrast is being brought into the image. Now, if you make a mistake and you go outside of the lines, it's okay. Just bring black back to your foreground color to take the effect off. Black conceals and white reveals when you're using layer masks. Okay, so um, normally I would zoom in, but just for time uh, purposes, uh, this works just fine. <laughs> okay, so I am going to flatten uh, my image, and there we go. Next thing I want to do is duplicate the background layer so I can blur it. You do not want to blur your uh, original image. So you want to layer, duplicate layer. Uh, I normally don't name my layers, but I'll just name that blur. Um, now, normally from here, a lot of people would go to filter blur and select uh, Gaussian blur or whichever blur that you're wanting to select from the menu and they would blur the image. However, when you do that, your TP and subject or whatever props you have in the image will then blur and leak outside of the lines. Um, so you'll get, um, so in this photograph, for example, I would see a little white shadow <laughs> or glow around the TP because of the blur. So what we're going to do to make that go away uh, and to, to get rid of the glow outside that's you know from the blur uh, being blurred outside of the line is we're going to clone out the subject and any props that you have in the image first and then blur it okay it takes just a little bit of extra time but it's definitely worth it it's 
So um, what I'm going to do is grab my clone tool, okay? And just real quick here, it does not have to look perfect. Keep in mind, we're blurring this layer afterwards, okay? This is mine. Uh, if you weren't to blur the image, obviously this would be, look kind of bad. <laughs> but we're going to blur it, and this is just fine. Okay, so I'm going to Alt-click to sample uh, a layer, or a part of my image, rather. And I'm just going to paint over. If you want a fairly small brush, and you want to Alt-click, uh, different areas of your image just to make it look uh, fairly realistic. And uh, just paint over the image here. Notice how I just keep sampling from different areas of my image and painting. I am not extremely worried about uh, what the background looks like right now because, again, we will be blurring it. So no big deal. All right, I'm not going to make you sit there and watch me clone out the background, so we're just going to use this pre-saved um, layer that I had created earlier. Okay, so now we're ready to blur our background. I'm going to go to Blur, Gaussian Blur, and let's see here. I'm actually, uh, I'm going to blur it at 8.2 uh, pixels for my radius and keep that at 100%. Okay, so now we need to bring our girl and the teepee out in the image because uh, right now they've disappeared. So I'm just going to take the opacity down temporarily uh, until I can see the girl and the teepee. And I'm going to zoom in and click my uh, brush. And I need to, um, I like working with layer masks. I can either erase the blur off of my subject or what would be easier is going to layer, uh, let's see here, layer mask, and I want it to reveal all. So notice how I have that little white box, that's my layer mask, and it's selected. Okay, I've got my brush selected. I'm going to bring black to the foreground color to conceal the blur from my subject and the TP. Opacity is 100%. And I'm just going to start uh, taking that blur off of my subject. And I'm just going to paint in the middle here, and then I'm going to make my brush smaller and crisper uh, once I move towards the edges of my uh, teepee. And right now I'm just taking the blur off of my subject and the teepee, or the subject, not necessarily mine. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to make my brush much smaller, and I'm going to select a hard brush because I want the edges to be crisp. I'm using the left and right bracket keys to make my brush uh, larger and smaller. Okay, so I have finished removing the blur from my subject, uh, the subject and the TV, and so I'm ready to bring the opacity all the way back up to 100%. Um, and notice how we've got a perfect crisp TP standing out from the blur here and the girl as well. That's exactly what I wanted. However, I do want to take some of the blur off of the grass in the foreground because it really looks, uh, it still looks unnatural. So I've still got uh, my black selected as the foreground color, my brush. I am going to select a soft, soft edged brush, make it bigger with my right bracket. I'm going to bring the opacity of my brush down to about 30. Okay, and I'm just going to start brushing this away from the grass uh, and around my subject. I don't necessarily want to take very much off of the uh, cement here in front of her, so I'm going to bring the opacity down a bit. Uh, I'm just going to keep painting around the, uh, the TP just to bring a little bit more blur off of that area. Okay, so notice, again, here's our before image, no blur added. We've got contrast added to the girl and the TP and the blur. Already we've got a huge, huge difference. So now we're just going to finish our edit. And you always want to flatten that blur layer because if you add more uh, enhancements to your image, it can uh, cut through the blur and uh, undo what you had just done here. So you spent all that time, go ahead and flatten your image at this time. And next we're going to uh, add a gradient. So to do that, I'm gonna click on this little 
circle at the bottom, it's another way of clicking layer, new adjustment layer. Okay, I'm going to select gradient map. And uh, now we get to select our colors. I know right now this looks crazy, but we're going to fix it. Okay, so I'm going to add orangey tones to the image. I want a darker kind of pumpkin orange tone on the left here. And on the right hand side, I'm going to select a light peachy tone. Okay, so I like that. And I'm just going to change the blending mode here to hard light. There we go. And it still looks kind of crazy. We're going to bring the opacity way down, uh, work our way up. I'm going to keep that right around 20%. So I've got a little bit of a, an orangey tone uh, sneaking into my photograph here. I love it. Uh, next, I'm going to run uh, my airy brush from the Dark and uh, Rich and Bold collection from the Discovery series. Uh, so right down here at the bottom, I've got my airy brush. I'm going to hit play. Paint with a soft white brush over areas of your photo. You wish uh, to have an airy effect. So I'm going to use this to lighten. I'm just going to bring my brush right around 30 here. And I'm just going to lighten a little bit outside of the TP on the bottom here and the girl. Okay, um, so I've got that lightened. Next, I'm going to run my moody brush. And again, this is bringing attention to the subject, which is exactly uh, our goal. Um, so my moody brush will darken the background. So I'm just going to make my brush a little bit larger and darken the background here. I actually don't want to darken so much of the background over here where I'm bringing the light into the image. So I'm going to take that off. And then I'm just going to paint it on a little bit on this side. There we go. Okay, I really like that. Next, I'm going to run my bold vignette. Okay, it's really, really very, very dark. So I'm going to bring the opacity down to 20. And again, I'm going to remove the effect from the left hand side of the image that's where I want the light to be coming through uh, here in just a moment so we've got a little bit of a change there next I'm going to add a color overlay we'll, we can do it this way or go to layer new adjustment layer or actually well, let's see here new fill layer solid color and again I'm going to select a pumpkin color there we go. I like that. And I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay. And again, that's very, very crazy. <laughs> We're going to bring the opacity down, just work our way up. So I like that. I'm going to keep it right around 40%, but it's cut, it's way too bright on the girl. I like what it's doing to the background, all the, the richness that I'm getting. I need to take a lot of that off of the girl and the TP. So I've got my layer mask selected that's already built in. Black is my foreground color to conceal. I've got my brush selected and I'm ready to go. So I am uh, going to paint with a 40% opacity and I can just keep painting over and over to remove more and more of the effect from the girl and the TP here. Okay, so I like that. Here's our before and after. We've just brought a whole lot of color into the image and infused it. Um, so next I want to add a little bit of a matte tone. So I'm going to go up to my uh, matte collection from the Discovery series and I'm going to run matte haze. I'm going to bring that down to about 30, um, let's see, about 34% there. Okay, and I also want to remove the haze from the, the subject here. So I'm just going to paint over her. I've still got my black brush selected got my layer mask selected and I'm just painting over her so we can keep that contrast that we had brought to the image early on. So I am going to click on my little half circle at the bottom and select gradient and we're, we're going to change this. I know it looks odd with the white at the bottom of the image. First I'm going to deal with my colors. Um, so I'm going to click on this little box next to gradient. And the bottom two dials, left and right, are the color. Okay, the left one handles the uh, inside color. So I'm going to try to get as close to a peachy white as I can. 
there we go. And the bottom right handles the out and the outer colors of your, your haze that we're adding to the image. So I'm going to do a little bit more of a darker peach color and press OK. Okay, now I'm going to change my style to radial. And only while I have this gradient fill box open can I move that light around my image. And actually, I'm sorry, I'm going to click on gradient one more time and just bring this top right dial in so I can kind of tame the haze that was coming, uh, filling the outer part of the light here. Press OK. So now I'm going to move this up to the top right hand part of my image. Corner. I don't want it to be too crazy, so I'm going to hide it towards the corner a little bit more and press OK. I'm going to change the blending mode to hard light. Okay, I have a beautiful glow on my image. If I decide later on that I don't like where that is, I just double click on the thumbnail here and now I have the freedom to move it around again. Okay, and uh, two more steps here and we'll be done. Just little things. I had decided later on in my edit that I wanted to make it just a little bit more dramatic. So I went to levels. And I'm going to brighten up the girl in the TV just a little bit more. So I brought the middle slider up to uh, about 1.10. And notice how it brightens the whole photograph. I just want that effect on the girl. So I'm going to press uh, select the layer mask, press Control I, and bring white to my foreground color and opacity 100%. I'm just going to paint that lightness and brightness onto the girl. Um, I'm not really worried about the very top part of the TP here. Okay, and again, you'll want to be more careful than I was. I can see where I haven't gotten the, the entire TP looking at my layer mask, but that's fine. Um, so next I'm going to select levels yet again to darken the outer part of my image. I'm going to bring that to 0.84, something close. There we go. I'm going to press control I again so I can just paint this on the background of my image. And we're just making the, the image just a little bit more moody. Painting towards the outside here. And there's our edit from beginning to end. Let's look at the before real quick here. Here's our before, beautiful image. We just enhanced it a bit. Blurring the background, adding a beautiful light, and uh, really just bringing the attention in towards our subject. Uh, if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to comment on the blog post. If you're watching YouTube, I will have a link to the blog post as well. Um, thank you guys.